Hello, students. This is Mr. Wilkie. I'm going to show you pretty quickly how to make a works cited page in a Google Doc. I have already made a new Google Doc here. One thing you want to do is go to your page setup, make sure you're in portrait orientation, set all of your margins to one inch. I'm going to title this works cited. I am going to center that heading. I'm going to select all the text and make sure my font is set to Times New Roman and the size is set to 12. I also am going to check my line spacing right here with this button that has the arrow pointing up and down next to three lines, and I'm going to set that to double spacing. Then go to my second line, go back to left alignment. All right, now let's cite a source. I have a few URLs here from sources that students have used on a project. I'm going to copy that link and go to Scribber. Scribber, S-C-R-I-B-B-R, -B -B has a pretty good citation generator. So go right here at the top to MLA Citation Generator. Now, technically for science, we should be using APA. But because I want to help you out with what you're going to be doing for your English classes this year, I'm going to show you how to do it in MLA format. So click website, and we're going to paste the website right into this search bar. And Scribber is going to look for our article, and it found what looks like our article. Why are some kids thriving during remote learning? In fact, let's open that article up in another window so that we can verify a couple things. So back on Scribber. What the citation generator does is it searches for some of the information relating to the article and tries to fill in some blanks so it can start writing your citation for your Works Cited page. Now we gave it the URL, it found the title, so let's double check that. Why are some kids thriving during remote learning? Okay, we found that correctly. The name of the website, Edutopia, that's correct. This website is called Edutopia. The author's name, Nora Fleming, that's correct. The publication date, the 25th of April, 2020, April 24th, 2020. This is April 25th, 2020, so we want to change that. And if we go down here to the very bottom of the page, scroll all the way down, find this little copyright symbol, and it says Copyright 2020 George Lucas Educational Foundation. That's the publisher. You should be able to find in the footer, which is the bottom part here, of most websites, this little copyright statement and the name of the publisher. So that's our publisher, George Lucas Educational Foundation. And we have all those blanks filled in, and we click Cite Source. You can see I already made one earlier. Scribber just made this citation for us. It has the name of the author, last name first, first name last, followed by a period, the title of the article within quotes, the title of the website in italics, followed by a comma, the name of the publisher, followed by a comma, the date published, followed by a comma, and then the full URL so that somebody can look that article up for themselves and read it and verify what we said about it. So I just click on this to copy it. I'm going to go to my Works Cited page and paste. Now this chose to indent this an extra half inch. I don't need that. I'm going to move it back and go to my next line. Okay. Let's do that one more time with one more source. I will use this big article here. Or did I, I already cited that one? Let's use this article here. So I'm going to copy the URL. I'm going to open it up so I can verify the information. I'm going to go back to Scribber, click on website, enter the URL, make sure that that's the proper article. I know it is, 2010 Mary Madden, Adults and Cell Phone Distractions. And I'm going to verify the information. Is the title correct? Yes. 
Is the website correct? Pew Research Center Internet and Technology. Hmm. Well, it says something different, so I'm going to change it so it's accurate. Okay. Authors, Mary Madden. Uh, oh, it looks like there was a second author that's not listed, so we need to add an author. That author's name was Lee Rainey. Publication date correct. June 18th, 2010. 18th of June, 2010. And then what's the name of the publisher? Well, it's probably Pew Research Center. Let's go to the bottom and see if there's an extra copyright statement. Copyright 2020 Pew Research Center. Let's paste that in here. All right, that's it. Cite our source. And here's our source, Madden, Mary, and Lee Rainey. In an MLA citation, you only put the last name first for the first author. If there are more than three authors, then you only list the first one followed by et al. And I think you guys have seen that before. So let's copy this. Let's paste it into our works cited. Good. Let's copy the next one that I already made. Paste it into our works cited. And here's a trick. If you two finger click on your Chromebook or right click on your mouse and go to paste without formatting, it actually shouldn't mess up your, uh, your indents. It should keep it with what's called this hanging indent. A hanging indent means that the first line is not indented, but every subsequent line of the entry has a half inch indent. And that is appropriate for MLA format. Okay, if you have more questions about MLA formatting, you should definitely talk to your English language arts teacher because I actually don't write in MLA format. Um, as a science person, we do all of our writing in, well, several different formats um, depending on the journal. Um, but this is appropriate for your English class. And if you have more questions, definitely ask your English teacher. They are the experts. Now, what do we want to do if we're going to do this on a slide? Well, honestly, you can just make this entire entry on a Google slide, which I've done here. Have work cited, post at the top. We could even put it all in the same text box. And same thing, list your sources, use the proper MLA format, including font, size, hanging indents, all that. What this does is it creates a list that the reader of your project can refer back to. So if I had the last name Fleming in parentheses, following some information that I referred to from that article, the reader would know to come back to the Works Cited page and look for Fleming. And if they wanted to read that article for themselves, they can find the full URL, go and read the article for themselves, okay? So we showed you how to assemble a Works Cited page, how to apply your heading, uh, your page margins, and your hanging indent the proper font and font size to use, and how to use a citation generator like the one from Scribber, which is very easy to use and very low on ads. Uh, to properly format your citations, it's kind of a shortcut. Eventually, the more you make these uh, works cited pages, you'll learn the formatting, um, what to put in italics, where to put commas and periods. Um, for today, I'm OK if you use a shortcut. Use your resources. So we know how to do all those things. Um, you guys have already studied in-text citations, so if you have any more questions, let me know. I hope you find this video helpful. Please like, subscribe, and comment below.